Elspeth von Draken is a magistrix of the Amethyst Order, also known as the Dark Lady of Nuln, and the Graveyard Rose. She has been associated with Nuln for three generations. Elspeth is a very pale, youthful, but inhuman, almost spectral, unchanging beauty. She is a strong ally of Nuln and the current elector, Countess Emanuel von Liebwitz, but the Supreme Patriarch, Thyrus Gorman, regarded her independence as a liability and resented both her enigmatic manners and great power, as does his successor, Balthazar Gelt. She does not take on apprentices. Her family have long been touched by the winds of magic for good and ill, and she herself has become one of the most powerful amethyst mages of the age. She had little time or interest in the politics of her order or any other, remaining fiercely independent. However, she does travel widely, collecting and experimenting with many arcane devices and artifacts, and has a substantial storehouse of such treasures. When at Nuln, she inhabits a tall black tower on the edge of the Gardens of Moor, but maintains another similar tower in the Grey Mountains. She maintains links with both the court of the city and also the Temple of Moor, which also helps protect her from interference from her college and the agents of Balthazar Gelt, who sees her as a potential threat to his own power. Elspeth will also seek out enemies of the Empire and has dealt with not only the Mire Hulk Raw Bones, but also the vampire Vashara of Lamia. A few witch hunters have challenged her, even attempting to storm one of her towers. All have been repulsed and none have ever been able to speak of anything that they have learned. As the horde of Tamar can approach the city, she appeared at the court of Countess Emanuel von Liebwitz, declaring that the dead had spoken to her of the danger, and she had discovered much about it with the aid of her carmine dragon steed. Before the battle began, she gave Theodore Bruckner a special talisman that would not only ward him against danger, but also form part of her own master plan. Telling him to seek out the Lord of the Vast Horde, she watched the initial stages of the conflict from a high perch on the cathedral spire, atop her dragon, waiting the right moment to strike. As the Kurgan cavalry was being destroyed by the guns of Nuln and the magic of wizards of the College of Metal, she took to the field, tearing apart Orbal Vipergut and the dragon he rode, letting them crash down into the increasingly dispirited Kurgan forces. She then unleashed not only her own dragon, but her powerful magics on the tribesmen until the survivors broke and fled. Finally, Bruckner engaged the Maggot Lord himself, and although he prevailed, cutting down the Chaos Champion of Nurgle, the fell creature unleashed his curse, beginning to take over the body of his slayer. However, Elspeth had planned for this, and her talisman blazed with power, consuming both of them completely, also breaking his magic, which destroyed a vast area around it and slew her dragon even as she faded away. Following the battle, she was not seen in Nome for several years, but when she returned, she had recovered her pale and youthful beauty. She uses the lore of death, and as a lore master is able to use any and all spells from that lore. In addition, she is so saturated with the magic that she can become an insubstantial specter at will. In battle, she carries her pale scythe, a magical weapon made more of shadow than steel, made by her and attuned to the magic of death. In 8th edition, she rode a Carmine Dragon, and she carried the Death's Timekeeper, an ancient hourglass said to contain the remnants of a god of death, and which, after long study, has given Elspeth some control over death and time. And the Pale Scythe is a keening scythe made from shadow and is said to be created by Elspeth herself. Carmine dragons, or Encarmine dragons as they are also known, are rare and powerful dragons. They are said to be created when a lair is so saturated with the wind of Shaish that the magic gathers into the form of a mighty dragon. Few will enter alliances with mortals, and even fewer allow themselves to be ridden. 
Their lustrous scales are supple but as hard as steel, bright red when the dragon is newly formed, and shifting to a deep purple as they age. Carmine dragons, or Encarmine dragons as they are also known, are rare and powerful dragons. They are said to be created when a lair is so saturated with the wind of Shaish that the magic gathers into the form of a mighty dragon. Few will enter alliances with mortals, and even fewer allow themselves to be ridden. Their lustrous scales are supple but as hard as steel, bright red when the dragon is newly formed, and shifting to a deep purple as they age. Magistrix Elspeth von Draken rode a carmine dragon at the Battle of Nuln in 2510 IC, although it perished in the conflict. They favor battle sites, swamps, and ruined cities, anywhere that there has been death on a great scale where the spirits of the dead can whisper to them. The breath of a carmine dragon is a blast of amethyst magic which can turn flesh to dust and wither metal, the heaviest armor providing no protection. Some ancient dragons are powerful mages, always using the lore of death. The Amethyst Order is one of the eight imperial colleges of magic. Amethyst wizards are one with the dead and as a result have a fearsome reputation, so much that members of the order are shunned by the inhabitants of Altdorf. But there are those who crave contact with the departed loved ones or those dead souls whose secrets they wish to learn. Amethyst wizards are able to communicate with the spirits of the dead, and to help facilitate this, the Amethyst building of the college overlooks the outdoor cemetery, but most avoid any association with necromancy. The Amethyst Order also have the power to deal death, suck the life from an enemy, leaving naught but a husk or casting a wind of death that withers flesh. Wizards of the Order, also known as Spiriters. Shaish can have varied effects upon mages, and for many, the effect is physical, the body growing gaunt and pale like a corpse, their hair growing limp and patchy until most shave it off. Shaish can affect the personality, with some magisters grow cold and cynical, whilst others are morose and lock themselves away behind the college walls as much as possible. Now for Elspeth, the Death's Timekeeper is the reason she is able to avoid such effects and keep her youthful beauty. The Amethyst College in Altdorf overlooks the Altdorf Cemetery, and near the Temple of Moor it is an elaborate dark stone structure with numerous gothic towers, each home to hundreds of bats. Resembling the entrance to a temple to Moor, its doorway is always open, but the interior appears empty and silent. Only those with the ability to use the lore of death can step through and into the true hidden college. The Amethyst Order is strongly allied with the Jade Order, with their two patriarchs often combining in any matters concerning the colleges. The Cult of Moor has many links and works with the Amethyst Order, but there are also tensions as some priests suspect their magic is disguised necromancy, and so the Cult of Moor cooperates in order to keep a close eye on the Amethyst Mages. The lore of magic they study is the lore of death. The scythe that the amethyst mages carry is often portrayed inverted to represent the heavy burden the wizards carry. A pair of overlaid and crossed scythes inscribed by the amethyst mage on a tomb warns of a slumbering evil within. The Colleges of Magic are an established learning center for magicians and wizards throughout the Empire. Primarily based in Altdorf, there is one college for each of the Winds of Magic, each of which forms the nexus of one of the Orders. Each has its own masters, and the sorcery of each is different and distinct from the others, although all remains part of the great source of magic, Chaos. Originally established by the High Elf Archmage Teclis at the request of Magnus the Pious in 2304 IC. Following the Great War against Chaos and Magnus's ascension to the Imperial Throne, the colleges have flourished into fantastic learning centers from which most, if not all, the battle wizards of the Empire have originated. Indeed, the practice of magic beyond the strictures of the Colleges of Magic is utterly forbidden, and is a crime punishable by the most painful death. 
The master of the colleges of magic is known as the Supreme Patriarch, and his word is law in all matters magical throughout the Empire. The winds of magic blow strongest for the Supreme Patriarch's order, and fellow wizards of that order to find their powers greatly enhanced during his reign. Only once every eight years may the Supreme Patriarch's rule be challenged. A wizard may challenge him to a magic duel, with the winner becoming the new master of magic. Theodore Bruckner, also known as the Hound of Judgment and the Titan Headsman, served as the Elector Countess Emanuel von Liebwitz of Nolm's Headsman and Personal and Judicial Champion. His role exists to enable the Countess to meet the ancient right of trial by combat available to the Empire's aristocracy, except after the commission of the most dire of crimes. He was known for his massive size and near superhuman strength. The status of headsman makes Bruckner in effect both the personification of bloody-handed justice in the city and death incarnate to the Countess's political enemies. A giant of a man, dour, ruthless, and taciturn, he towers head and shoulders over even the sturdy folk of Wissenland, who make up the majority of Nolan's citizenry, and it is of little surprise that many tales have grown up to surround him. Some stories attribute his great size to sinister origins in Norska, darkly tainted blood, or even alchemical experimentation at the Countess's behest. The truth, however, lies unknown, save to Bruckner himself, and perhaps his patron. He is famed as a savage and skilled fighter, and most of all for his prodigious, some say inhuman, strength. Such is his physical power that during his judicial duel with the noted swordsman Lord Hans Craster, that after Craster, by virtue of superior speed and technique, had managed to disarm the hulking Bruckner, undeterred, the champion of Nuln grappled his plate-armored opponent, lifted him aloft, and snapped his neck with his bare hands. Bruckner has a violent reputation, sowing fear and apprehension in those that would face him in combat or scheme and plot behind the Countess Emanuel's back. Bruckner is, however, no general or war leader and has no talent or taste for such things, even if others would follow him, which is doubtful given the hatred his name inspires amidst the burghers and lordly families of Nuln. Instead, he is content to fight and kill at his mistress's command, and has lasted over a decade in his highly paid office, making him the longest serving champion of Nuln in living memory. With the threat of Tamarkan's host ravaging its way northward, Bruckner rode out with Nuln's army as he had before, astride the huge and nearly uncontrollable demogriff Reaper, itself a freakishly large example of its kind, taken from Nuln's war menagerie. At the Countess's command, Bruckner had taken an oath sworn before the Great Council of the city to slay Tamarkan for his crimes and dispoliation of Wissenland, and at his mistress's insistence, he had taken with him a talisman of the wizard Elspeth von Draken to protect him from the malign powers of the enemy a decision that would have fateful consequences as events unfolded at the Battle of Nuln in 2510 IC. The Bale Flame Amulet was a talisman gifted to Bruckner by the Magistrix Elspeth von Draken to protect him from the foul sorceries of the oncoming horde. This black gem possessed powers unguessed at and served the Magistrix's own deadly schemes. Liar's Bane was a magic sword. Bruckner wields this mighty sword as easily as a lesser man might wield a rapier, and a great many dissenters, renegades, and the Countess's political rivals have found themselves a head shorter at his hands. The Storm Lance is a magic weapon with a bladed tip crafted with meteoric iron engraven with the runes of the heavens. This lance strikes its target like a bolt of lightning, both burning and blasting them. This weapon may be used once per game when Bruckner is conducting a charge while mounted on Reaper. Jubal Falk is an engineer of the city of Nuln in the Empire. A veteran soldier, he is the field commander of the Nuln Ironsides, but he is also a skilled military engineer, although one with no tolerance for laziness or incompetence. He was born a Cooper's son in Nuln, and has risen quickly at the Imperial Gunnery School, many even seeing him as a future guildmaster. 
After their muster for the Battle of Nuln in 2510 IC, Jubal commanded the company at the brutal fight for the Crow's Levy, holding the line against the Dolgan cavalry charges. Although wounded by an axe blow, he continued in command, even slaying a Chaos Sorcerer with a precise headshot from his Hawkland long rifle using alchemically forged shot. The Mercurical shot is a hollow bullet filled with vitriol, and it can bring down the largest target. The Nuln Ironsides is one of the iron companies of the city of Nuln in the Empire. The famed Imperial Gunnery School in Nuln maintains several iron companies who not only defend the school and its artillery trains, but by treaty with the Elector Counts of Whistleland, served in their armies. Apprentices and retainers of the school make up the regiments. The Imperial Gunnery School is a famed military university and industrial complex within Nome. The province of Nome is respected across the empire as the home to the finest handguns and war machines, save for those constructed by the dwarves. Graduates from the school are highly prized for their skills in maintaining the war machines and in battle training artillery on vulnerable targets with unerring accuracy. Perhaps the most surprising fact is that the school does not create new weapons of war. Such tasks are executed by the Imperial Engineer School, either the well-known Altdorf School, where luminaries such as von Meinkopt, creator of the Hellblaster, and Feilman, inventor of the grenade-launching blunderbuss, were taught, or the Gunnery School neighboring college in Nuln, once the Colleges of Engineering create a war machine, the Imperial Gunnery School then start training gunners to use them. This creates a high demand for the services with only a limited number available at any one time. In spite of this demand, the school refuses to lower its standards, concentrating on producing a small core of highly skilled gunners and engineers, rather than churning out a large body of substandard graduates barely capable of knowing which end of the cannon the ball comes out of. Most of the students at the school come from the imperial nobility, sons who show talents in mathematics, or an interest in things that go boom, as well as not being immediately in line for succession to their family's noble titles. Graduates are given the choice of staying on for further study, perhaps eventually becoming master gunners, or returning home. For some, the prospect of yet more years of study will send them home to fight as an army's pistoliers or outriders. Those who remain will attain the pinnacle of their craft and get to watch their former trainees charge across the battlefield, often to their deaths. All the guns of the school are lovingly maintained by their crews and often are named for great heroes of the past, inscribed or painted on the carriage or barrels. Nuln is a city-state, the second largest city of the Empire in the Old World. Having temporarily replaced Altdorf as the imperial capital during the reign of Magnus the Pious, it retains its prominence. Situated at the junction of four provinces, Reichland, Wissenland, Averland, and Stirland, and two great rivers, the Reich and the Aver, Nuln is a major trading center. Goods enter the city from the north and the south, from Whistleland, the dwarf holds in the mountains, and especially from Tilia. Nuln is also the base of one of the two arch lectors of the cult of Sigmar. The Temple of Sigmar is large and ornate, and attracts thousands of pilgrims due to its connections with Magnus the Pious. The second most important temple in Nuln is that of Verena. Though it is a spiritual center, it is also a technological center. The city is home to the Imperial Gunnery School, where most of the Empire's cannons are forged, and Nuln is one of the Empire's greatest factories for black powder weapons. The Gunnery School takes in the metal ores from the hills and transforms them into precision weaponry such as handguns, pistols, and cannons. They then sell them off to the other provinces for a hefty profit. The school also trains the finest artillery crews, many expatriate dwarfs, work in the school, and worked to create new weapon designs. As a natural consequence of the creation of black powder weapons in mass, the armies of Nuln use many of these weapons themselves. They are also famous for using the pike and half pike heavily. It also has some of the oldest and most esteemed universities in the Empire. They even surpass Altdorf in this regard. 
although it is hard to tell. As a result of its proximity to the mountains, it also has been the target of orc invasions for centuries. The City Banner has a golden lion holding the scale of Arena, goddess of learning and blindfolded maiden, is often seen on the regimental flags as well as the famous bridge of Nuln. In the very early empire, sometime before the 4th century IC, Emperor Folk moved the capital to Nuln. Nuln was once a renowned university city, the city's first colleges having been established by the Empress Agnatha. The city's reputation still draws students from far and wide. Nuln served for a time as the imperial capital until a century ago, when Altdorf was restored as the empire's traditional capital. It was from Nome during the darkest periods of the Empire that Magnus the Pious issued his first great rallying calls for unity against the forces of chaos, whose growing power threatened to finally overcome the disintegrating Empire. <sighs> Emperor Dieter IV spent a fortune enhancing the appearance of Nome, creating a palace of gold, many great ornate buildings and fountains, however, when word came that Gram the Paunch was fighting the armies of Karak Varn, Dieter and the Imperial Court retreated to Altdorf, refusing the calls for aid from the dwarves. Several years later, Nuln itself was attacked and, after a siege, brutally sacked before the Goblin Horde moved on. In 2499 I see a huge number of Skaven boiled up out of the sewers and attacked the city, nearly capturing Countess Emmanuel and destroying large areas. The Great Horde of Tamarkan emerged from Winter's Teeth Pass in the Black Mountains in 2510 IC, their target being the home of Magnus the Pious. The city of Fildorf was overwhelmed despite the Margrave amassing his forces to defend it, and the Horde continued to advance towards Nuln. Countess Emmanuel and her war council received advice from Elspeth von Draken, as well as Leopold the Black, whose border princedom had been crushed by the invaders. As panic spread through the city, a brutal crackdown was imposed with lawbreakers quickly inducted into the growing militia. Countess Emmanuel, a shrewd iron-willed ruler rather than a frontline general, used the vast riches she had access to employ mercenary companies, battle wizard, and even half dozen land ships being built for Marienburg. On more than one occasion, she was heard to recite the proverb, Wars are waged by warriors, but won with gold. Sedition was quickly dealt with, her headsman and champion mounting a dozen formerly influential heads on spikes. The great army of the city prepared to meet the horde in battle, deploying substantial forces to meet them initially in the field before intending to fall back on a series of defensive lines. Soldiers, wizards, and fanatics of a dozen cults prepared to face the monsters of Nurgle while Elspeth von Draken's dragon clung to a high cathedral spire, giving her a perfect vantage point. So began the battle for Nome. Finally, as the battle turned against the forces of chaos, Theodore Bruckner confronted the leader of the Horde as he attempted to enact a last desperate ritual. As the foul champion attempted to enter his opponent's body as he'd done for many others, the talisman given to Bruckner by Elspeth came to life, consuming both in a powerful flash of fire. The ritual failed, the demons were dispelled, and the battle was won. In 2515 I see. Ostland was invaded by a large force from the north, and requested aid. Although the Emperor was in Bretonia with much of the army, a coalition was assembled including a relief force from Nome under Grand Marshal Ludwig Gutman. The road to Ostland was long and delays had plagued the army until finally Gutman's chief advisor, the bright wizard Ludus Ludici, reported that large force of cutthroats and bandits was approaching, led by the Mad Count of Averland. Ludwig formed his army into battle line, protecting the town of Sudenheim.